What's up, this is Emilio with Quick Property Solutions coming to you from Detroit, Michigan. And uh, shooting this video today because in this video, I wanna talk about things to look out for when you're rehabbing in Detroit. Now this could be for your rehab or for your rental, but these things will definitely affect your rehab budget, which will affect your bottom line. Thank you for watching um, and today we are in Detroit, Michigan where we're one, at one of our rehabs and um, it is currently gutted. Uh, this house was filled with plaster and furniture and now it's gutted. So um, while it's gutted, um, just coming here just to honestly look at the progress. But um, walking through here, I just I had a list, I started writing it down of some of the things that I wanted to cover um, while you are rehabbing your house. So let's just do a quick walkthrough of the house. We're in the entryway here, so I'm just going to flip the camera around. Okay, so this house is, um, was this a three-bedroom, one-bath house? And we're just going to do a quick walk around. This is the living room area. Um, we're in the demo phase right now, so we had all plaster here. Um, and right now this is a uh, dining room area, little porch area, little nook area. The kitchen's here. That's going down to the basement. Uh, then we got the stairs. So let's go upstairs real quick. Okay, and now here we have the bedrooms. One bedroom, two bedroom. Sorry if I'm moving pretty fast. It's pretty cold in here. And <laughs> I'm amped up on coffee. A little demo there, bathroom. There you go. Okay. Actually, so the big thing is, let me start off with this. What people think actually costs a ton of money, uh, visually wise, actually is really not that expensive. When I do walkthroughs of a house, a lot of times people are like, oh, sorry about the holes in the wall, sorry about the dirty carpet. Um, those are honestly the biggest concerns, or maybe like holes in the doors or a broken hinge. Those aren't actually really the big concerns. Those are probably the smallest in your rehab. The biggest things on your rehab to consider are all the mechanicals. Uh, the roof. Uh, your electrical, your plumbing, the foundation, and then something that a lot of people don't think about, especially if you're doing a rental, are your windows. Um, so let's do this. We're in this room right now, and we're going to kind of cut around in this uh, list of mine. Let's, cut, let's start with windows. We're in this room right now. Let's start with those. Okay, so let's see these windows. See these windows? These aren't broken. They're functional. But here's the thing, especially with the rehab. I mean, dude, you don't want you don't want original windows in the rehab. You want to replace these because you want that new look. Um, plus, these are just look at this; they're all rotted and stuff. But the one thing to think about too is that if you have a rental, the city is breaking down on the compliance from the city. So before the city was kind of really laxed. Honestly, the city probably couldn't even afford the um, the payroll for all the people to keep up with these um, some of these houses. So no one really checked. Um, no one really, you know, was strict on certificate of occupancy. But now that the city's starting to get a little money, um, they're starting to make sure that their houses are taken care of. They're getting extremely strict. So they're all starting to do something. They do the lead testing. So these are old windows, and under this are layers and layers of paint, potentially. Like, yeah, it looks like they painted over this. So when this house was built, they were using lead-based paint. And then over the years, um, people just started painting over them um, with non-lead-based paint. And then over the years, another layer, another layer. So what happens is, is the city, to get your compliance, they will come into the house and they will test all of um, the lead in, in the house. So if there is lead there, you have to do lead abatement. And a lot of the times with windows, um, you know, people will paint. You see they'll paint these little tracks here, but in the summertime when you open the window up and down, the window here will brush against the new paint and just start to expose and break down to the bottom layer that has lead base in them anyways. So at the end of the day, you might just want to replace these. Now, when you're thinking about your rehab budget, Think about this, there's two windows in here. This is just the top floor. So one, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight, nine, all original. That's this floor alone. So nine, let's say on the bottom there's another, let's say there's eight. So nine plus eight, 17. Um, we might have missed an extra three windows, I don't know. Let's say 20 windows altogether for a house. 20 windows, each window costs uh, 250, let's round it up to $300. So 20 windows, 300 bucks. You're adding $6,000 to your rehab. That definitely affects your bottom line. So that is something to think about. Um, okay, next. Okay, so one, windows. Number two, roof. So let's do this, let's go to the top. And... We're going to go to the attic. Now, some of the houses in Detroit had um, a roofing material called wood shake. You see them a lot on the side of houses where it looks like like little square um, uh, pieces of wood and they're layered on top of each other. Um, they actually look kind of cool. Here's the issue, is that when you're in a house with them, the building code standards is... You know, I'm not a contractor, so I don't know the name of this, but you see these blocks of wood? <laughs> this is what the wood shake used to lie on. They used to just lay the pieces of wood on, on there. And what happens is, is over time, people just start putting, they don't knock that stuff off. They just put new shingle on top of it. So sometimes you could go to a house and just have layer and layer and layer of shingles on top of the original wood shake. Now here, you could actually see, this that's brand new plywood. So what happened at one time or another, they ripped off the roof, and then they replaced the wood shake and they put a new de they put new decking down. So on top of the new deck, that's when they could lay the tarp and then they could lay the shingles. But if you walk the house, make sure you go to the roof because if it looks like it's a brand new roof, but you look underneath it and it's the wood shake and you've got like five or six layers there, um, you'll look at the roof and be like, oh man, that shingle looks pretty old. Well, go up to the roof because if it's wood shake underneath there, you can't lay a shingle on top of it. You have to do a whole tear off, which means you have to tear it off every layer We've seen up to, it's, honestly, we've seen up to four layers. I think I think we saw one with five layers. Tear it all down, and then you have to put the new decking down, too, because look at the spacers in between here. You can't lay shingle or tarp down under there. It needs something solid to, needs needs something like, like, like the OCB board to put the shingles on top of. So, a tear off, I just poked my finger on that nail. Fuck. A tear off um, is... A regular roof with the decking already, maybe three and a half, four, but with a tear off, it could be six to eight. Um, again, if you're working with a contractor that's giving you good pricing and you're giving them the whole project, they might give you a break on it. But um, but that's another thing to think about is the roof. Okay, number three is the plaster. Um, if you're renting, uh, the plaster, probably not that big of a deal. Um, however, if you're rehabbing, you don't want to paint on top of old plaster. It just looks really crappy. It's like it looks like a it looks like a halfway done rehab. What you want to do is you want to knock out the plaster. So you see these walls, these are all plaster. All these walls in here, plaster. Plus the one thing that actually leads into number, so what do we have? Three? We're at number four is your electrical. So if you come here, you see this right here? That's the old school uh, knob and tube wiring. That's gotta go. And that was behind the plaster. So um, when you're rehabbing, I think you can have Nubin Tyrant. I got to look that one up, I have to ask. If anybody's watching this video and you know the answer, um, if there's knob and tube wiring in a house, is that compliant with the city? I think so, but anyways, if you're rehabbing, you don't want that. You want to have brand new electrical, and to get to that electrical, you got to tear out the plaster anyways, and then put up brand new drywall, make it smooth, look brand new. So those are the two things about that. Um, so with this house, they have to redo and run electrical through all this. Okay. Roof windows, plaster. Okay. Okay, now we're on the last uh, two. So we did uh, windows, roof, Electrical plaster, that's four. So we're gonna do kind of like a in between of five and six. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so for these two, we're gonna be going down to the basement. And you know what? I left my flashlight in my car. So we're just gonna go down here blindly. Hopefully it's not too dark. No, it's not that bad. Okay. Yeah, I wish I had my Oop, I wish I had my uh, flashlight. That's okay. So here's the basement. Now, the two things to think about in the basement are how are the walls? 
So the issue with some of these um, houses is that they've been vacant for a very long time. And what happens is if there are no gutters on the house, this I, I've seen this a lot on houses that are vacant for a very long time. If there's no gutters, what happens is, is it's usually in the corners. Okay, so the corners, there's downspouts. And a lot of the times, the downspout starts, starts at top of the roof. So what happens is the downspout gets knocked off because it's old. So what happens is, is the water hits the downspout and it doesn't go away from the house. It actually just shoots down into the foundation and hits the walls. So what happens is, is water just hits this wall and goes down, down, down on the outside. And then eventually what happens is, is these, even though it's brick or cinder block or port cement or whatever your foundation is, they soak up the water and the water breaks that down. And over time, especially if it's been vacant for a lot, like what is it, January, 2020, it's cold. So it freezes and then, and then it, and then uh, in the summertime and springtime, it melts away and then it freezes again and every time it freezes it starts to push and then come back push and what happens is over time the walls start to bow out or you start to see significant cracks um this basement is actually pretty dry um but yeah that's one thing to think about is the basement uh, in the basement is the foundation and a lot of the times what I do is um, when I'm walking around the exterior of the house I look to see if there are gutters okay let me flip that around so um, foundation uh, the last and final thing that will affect your rehab is your heating system which is in here in Michigan we have three we have boiler forced air furnace and then just a regular I don't I think it's like a non forced air furnace we call it a spider furnace so in this house we have a boiler now you can tell it's a boiler because look in the basement there are no ducts here so with a forced air furnace gas comes in through the furnace and then all this it generates a lot of heat and then there's a fan inside the furnace and then it spins and then it blows it forces the air up into these um into like duct duct works that go throughout the house um the non-forced air furnace we call it a spider furnace because it's it's a monster it's like literally like the size of this corner i mean it's humongous and it's got an asbestos wrapped um duct work now with the asbestos wrap ductwork, a lot of people, though they're asking how much will it cost to do to remove that furnace and put it in with a forced air furnace. If it works, don't touch it. That would be my suggestion. Um, obviously, if it's broken, you got to replace it. Then you have to do like because if it's asbestos, then you got to go through the abatement and all that kind of stuff. But uh, non-forced air furnaces, they work. They work really well, actually. So if it's not broke, then don't fix it. Um, they're compliant. A lot of the a lot of the cities, a lot of the houses in the city have them. So don't remove them because it's going to cost you a lot of money. Um, third is a boiler. So we have a boiler system here. Well, it's missing now, which is really good. So um, a boiler system, what it is, is it just boils a bunch of water, uh, and then the water gets shot out through these tubes, and then there's radiators throughout the whole house. And it's easy to see a boiler because if you're walking through, you see radiators in the corner or you don't see any vents and you see holes in the floor. That's because these tubes are going into the room, heating up the radiators and then heating the room. Um, they're super solid. Um, that's, it, they don't break. <laughs> well, yeah, they break a lot, actually. Boilers are pretty expensive. They're a pain in the ass, actually. So here are a couple of things about the boiler. Um, if you're doing a rehab, replace the boiler because... No one does boilers anymore. Plus, if you want to make it really nice, you want to do central AC. So central AC can't hook up to a boiler, can only hook up to a forced air furnace. With boilers too, um, to convert them, what, 55, 6,500. This one right here um, has no boiler. So it's around gonna be about 5,500, 6,000 bucks to convert. So to convert means you gotta knock down all these pipes. Now with the boilers here, you might add a little bit more because they actually have to remove the boiler and some boilers are just gigantic. So they got to remove all the pipes. And then what they have to do is they have to reduct the house, which means that they have to um, open up the walls, which thankfully they're already open, mostly because they have to do the electrical as well. And then they have to put ducts throughout the house. So that's going to add another six grand to your budget. So if you think about it, if you see a house and they're selling the house in Detroit for, I'm going to throw some crazy numbers out here, 25 grand. And at the end of the day, it could sell for a uh, hundred thousand bucks. You're like, that's awesome. Okay, so rehab, all you need is a kitchen and basement. No, you got to replace the boiler. 
replace it with a forced air furnace if it's the boiler's missing, that's 5,500. You need a brand new roof, that's 5,000. You need a brand new electrical to run it, that's 5,000. Um, you need all the new windows, that's 6,000. I mean, that's close to 20, 25,000. And mechanicals alone, you're not even including paint, doing the floors, any of that stuff. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, having more work actually means the price will be cheaper because it needs a lot more work. So you get the houses way cheaper, but you're putting a lot more money into the rehab. So um, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Um, I'm a fast talker. Sorry if I talk too fast, but if you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Please comment below. I'm trying to do my best to be out here. Um, it's cold. Uh, it's on the weekend. I don't want to be here on the weekend, but it's, um, uh, I, when I come to these houses, I wanted to share some of this information with you guys out there. So if you like it, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, find us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, my goal, by the way, is I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers, um, by the end of this year. I think right now I'm like at 160. So if you like it, please subscribe because I'm trying to grow my subscriber database. Uh, if you are an investor, please reach out to me. Go to quickpropertysolutions.co. Um, we buy houses and we rent them out and we rehab them ourselves, but a lot of times we also try and um, find um, buyers that Okay, sorry about that. Somebody called my phone and cut the video off. But anyways, yeah, uh, if you're a buyer, stop by our website, sign up to our buyers list, and we will talk to you. Uh, we'll show you our inventory that we have. Um, if you are an out-of-state investor or an investor that is looking for anybody to do the rehabs, we have a network of people that are helping out with that. So um, I partnered up with some... Uh, management company property management companies and also some rehabbers where they do a lot of the legwork they do the stuff like this they write up the scope of work um they do a ton of that stuff so um i could always forward those networks off to you if you are a wholesaler in the area um i would love to meet you stop by the website again sign up reach out to us through the website and uh website again is quickpropertysolutions.co thank you very much for watching and i'll talk to you soon